Orlando. Orlando. Welcome to the Ozone. Welcome to the Ozone. Welcome to the Ozone. Welcome to the Ozone. The voice of massive magic. Welcome back to another episode of the Ozone Podcast. In this episode, we have Justin, Al, myself, Anthony. Today is Thursday afternoon, January 21st, right after the presidential election. And uh, you know what's crazy? I was thinking. While I was watching some other NBA games, I realized that a lot of teams have very, very important representatives. You got Drizzy Drake for Toronto. Um, you got Spike Lee for New York. I'm not sure if he's still you know, a fan of the Knicks or anything. Uh, you had Jack Nicholson um, in, uh, in L.A., Snoop Dogg, L.A. You got a lot of these celebrities, right? Celebrity fans. Um who would you say is our big? Like, is Tiger? Do we still count Tiger Woods as like that guy for Orlando? Because I I want to I want to say before in the past it was between Tiger Woods and maybe Hulk Hogan. That's what it used to be, but I think we haven't seen those guys in a game in ten years, <laughs> if that. But uh, Buddy Watson is that the golfer guy? Is that his name? Bubba, Bubba Watson. Bubba, Bubba Watson. Watson. Yeah. yeah. Bubba. Watson. Um. No, I just think we we transitioned to old players showing up to support the Rashard Lewis's, the Hito Turkaloos. I don't know if we attract celebrity. I think I know I've been to a couple games where we had um, Miguel Cotto, the boxing Puerto Rican boxer, world champ. Yeah, I um, added the accent. Yeah, <laughs> um, showing up that we had uh, Thierry Henry, who used to play for France. You know, national soccer team played for the Red Bulls for a while. I think coached in the MLS also, but I can't think of, I can't think of uh, any celebrity that really comes out to the. I mean, games. we've we've had Mayweather come out to a handful of games. Huh. I'm a I'm a McGregor fan, so we can't even get started on that Mayweather McGregor nonsense. May, <laughs> Mayweather has come out to a couple games. Uh, Plies, I think, was um was a big fan at one point. Not even a fan. I think he just went to a lot of the games and then just kind of. Uh, reposted on his story. He was very vocal on some of the Magic games. But if you can choose one celebrity, so one cele- one realistic celebrity out there that you would want to be the celebrity fan, or what was the title that they gave Jersey in Toronto? The, um, the team ambassador, ambassador. Or the ambassador? Who, yeah. who would you choose? Who would you hire as the Orlando Magic team, celebrity team ambassador? Man. I'm putting you guys on the spot. So first name that comes. This to was mind. not. This was not planned. So now I got. I got to thank you. Like who? Who would send Orlando like figure? And you can't use. You can't use the names that I've said. Can't use Tiger, Bubba. Is it Buddy or Bubba? I got one. I, I got one. Bubba Watson. I really need to watch golf more. I'll go with Ken Griffey Jr. Mm. Ken Griffey. He lives in Orlando. He's an Orlando resident. He's been to games. I think he was in a game this season already. Uh, this season or last season? But he was at a game recently. Bro, that's that's all I can come up with. Unless you want to go with the best rapper in the NBA. The best rapper in the NBA? Oh. Our boy uh, Aaron Gordon. Oh man. <laughs> no, I don't He's a player and an ambassador. I don't know. You know, you know what's crazy is you said that and I thought of two people immediately. It doesn't make sense, but it's the first two names that come to mind. It was J. Cole and Master P. I don't know why I thought about those two. None of which would probably be at Magic Games consistently, but hey, That's, that that is false. That is false because Master P mm-hmm. was uh, sponsored. He had he had his rum that he sponsored in the Amway Arena, mm, and he true. showed up to a handful of games. Also, he See, stopped showing what? up, but he was definitely Ant, there. Ant with a little bit of uh, unknown Magic history. No, but for me, uh, being that he was present, and I know you mentioned him. You said someone you didn't mention. Uh, uh, but he was present. He was present with Cole Anthony and Greg Anthony and the family for draft night. And as a once fellow Nick fan and myself, I could say Spike Lee could bring that energy to Orlando to support Cole. And supporting Cole makes us better. So I support that. Man, I, I feel like it, all these other teams. And, and granted, this is these are people. These are fans that are watching the game. But man, when you got a player like Drake, and obviously this is um, when they allowed fans in the arena. But when you have a player like Drake that's right, right there, center court, and he's literally clapping in the ears of the other players, and really. 
like distracting him in the manner that he distracts him, it, it makes a it makes a lot of difference because you you have the players on the court that are talking smack. You have the fans, but to be able to have that voice right there, dead center in the middle, to be able to talk that that has that energy, to be able to talk smack to the players and the players are giving them a time and day. Yeah, I think that's just a an added home court advantage that um, we're we're missing out, man. We need to find we need to find a celebrity so ambassador. Like to ASAP. add add a footnote, and I know we're gonna get into talking magic basketball, but I just read before I came online. Um, so you know how Drake plays with other athletes, right? He shoots around with them and everything. Um, so apparently he had an album that was supposed to come out in January, <laughs> I, I, and he's not releasing this. it because he tore his ACL. Which I thought was a little comedic, and there's speculation that Steph Curry was the one who uh, caused the injury, crossed him up during a shoot around or something like that. Which I thought was funny. Oh damn! But um, yeah, hopefully uh, Drake gets better. It's a perfect chance. I think we put a magic jersey on him, invite him to Orlando, <laughs> he fits right in. <laughs> Man, I I think that <laughs> it's a valid reason. All right, it's a valid reason for him to push his album back. Quick story. Super quick story, just because you mentioned that. So obviously, I'm a. Uh, if you know me, I'm a diehard J Cole fan. Think that this dude is one of the best to yes, ever do sir. it, right? Um, but back in the day, before he was a nobody, before he, he uh, before he dropped his very first album, he was going on. He was going on a small tour, and obviously, he's not performing in an arena. He was performing in a small little venue. I want to say it was the Beecham. <clears throat> this dude was supposed to perform at the Beecham in Orlando. And when he got to Orlando before his performance that I had a ticket for, I um, had scheduled PTO. Like I, I was, I was invested. I'm looking forward to this concert. And this dude decided that it would be an amazing idea to go play basketball at the 24 hour fitness in the downtown area. When I tell you that this dude messed up his leg and could not perform that night, the amount of anger that I had because this dude legit could not perform because he had a basketball injury. But I will say <laughs> that I want to say he, they rescheduled the performance, the, the concert. And I want to say it was like maybe four or five, six months later. And this dude performed at the beach in a cast sitting down on a chair the whole entire time. And it's still to this day, one of the best concerts I've wow. ever been to. So there's that. <laughs> So that that's some Orlando history right there, <laughs> but let's let's get into some Magic basketball. All right, so um, it, it's been a little, it, we got we got a little sweet and sour in this episode because um, a lot of good, or excuse me, a lot of bad <laughs> and some good. So as of right now, the Orlando Magic we are currently ninth in the East with a record of seven and eight. Our offense is still struggling, averaging 104 points per game. That puts us 28th in the league. Three-point percentage is not where we want it to be at, 31.8%, 30th in the league. And our offensive rating in total is 103.9. That has us 28th. Defense could obviously be a lot better also. If our defense was great, then we would be winning more games. It's not. So our points allowed is 109.7, which has us 12th in the league, respectable. Blocks per game, 3.7, bottom tier of the league, 29th. And then our defensive rating is 109.9, which has us 18th in the league. This past Friday, we had a game against Boston. Man, did this game hurt. Orlando 97, lost to Boston, um, 97 to 124. Saturday, we played against Brooklyn, 115 to 122, lost that game. Saturday, how the hell did we lose to the New York Knicks? <laughs> How in the world did we lose? Obviously, they, they have something there. I, I don't know what it is, but they have something there. They're being coached by Tom Thibodeau now. And, you know, they they put the work on us. We lost that game 91-84. to 84. And then the game that I'm really looking forward to talking about was last night's game against the Minnesota Timberwolves. The Magic were able to break uh, their losing streak, 97. Um, Orlando Magic, 98. Minnesota 97. What are your thoughts on the games that you've seen so far? What kind of stood out to you? Man, it's uh, like you said, it's been a struggle. Um, and the funny part is each each game this past week, those four games, we actually played well at some point in the game that we made it kind of competitive. And we had, you know, with, within reach of actually winning that game. And then we just couldn't score. 
or we just couldn't stop them at a certain point in the game. Like yesterday was the second quarter. We, the game went from us being up eight or nine points to actually being down 21. Then it was against the Knicks. We, we had a competitive game. All of a sudden, they went on a big run, and we could not uh, respond back. Even though it was interesting at the end of the game, but we simply had had fallen too too deep to come back. And even Brooklyn, man, like we actually surprised that team with KD and, and, and Harden. We actually played hard against them, and we took it to the fourth quarter. It came down to the final minutes. Unfortunately, we lost that one too. Um, so we've been playing hard. Typical Magic basketball, typ typical Coach Clifford basketball. They're not going to quit, no matter what the score is. And that's why we watch games. Because no matter what, even though we lose some, most of these games recently, they're still fun to watch and we are competitive. But um, it hasn't been fun until last night. And I know we'll talk about it more in depth. But that game last night, that, that buzzer beater made everything kind of so much sweeter towards the end there. Yeah, I mean, what, I, what I've taken away from the four games is simple. Uh, Vucevic is the guy. Um, and as much as you know, Magic fan base wants to say we don't need Evan. Here goes another example that we do. First game back, drops 24. I think it was 24 points. Um, and, you know, his his offensive production was definitely needed. Could you imagine Terrence Ross struggling and the Magic didn't have Evan last night against Minnesota? We would have lost that game by 25, 30 points, which is what it was looking at, uh, looking like during that third, uh, second and third quarter. Um so those two guys are still vital to our success and man you know number one number one play on the on the nba.com's top 10 playlist cole anthony comes off off a tip off two missed free throws by uh minnesota aaron tips it out cole anthony grabs it runs down on the wing in forward motion his body turning three quarter you know three quarter way and still swishes it through the net um, it was good. I think um, I think when you lose consistently, you know, it kind of drains the team of energy and, you know, people start showing up and being more careless. Um, but then when you win an exciting game like that and you have a rookie hit that game winning three, everybody's, you know, kind of revitalized, rejuvenated, re-energized. Um, and I'm excited to see what the magic, you know, what they can turn th this one good instance into. What, what a legit play by play. Justin, you kind of like I, I was able to see it as you were speaking. Nah, man, that like I, I honestly I don't want to talk about the game. So we lost. I really only want to talk about uh, Cole's game winner. What an epic moment for the rookie. Um, I, obviously, he's a he's a first rookie in franchise history um, to to make a game winning shot. Um, he's the only rookie this year to be able to do that. They had his before the game. They had his um, side by side comparison with. Um, Anthony Edwards and yo, know, Cole Anthony is right there, man. For for a player that's just a 15 pick in the draft, um, obviously the Magic taking a risk on a player that they they're not accustomed or they they really don't look for that's out of their realm of uh, the type of player that we're used to them drafting. Man, it, the the amount of confidence uh, that this kid has to to have the the game awareness to be able to push a ball up, understanding how much time is left looking at your options, your reads, and make that split decision to say, I'm going to take it. And him taking that risk, man, goes to show you that no matter how bad he's been playing, no matter how unamazing his statistical numbers are, there, there are certain things that you can't teach. And it's it, there's something special about Cole Anthony. Um, obviously everyone's tone is different, right? Because before this moment, people were kind of getting on Cole Anthony kind of hard saying, you know, he shouldn't be our starter and, uh, understand that this is a player that did not have a summer league, was not able to partake in team, um, on any team capacity until immediately after he was drafted. And then it was time to start the season. The fact that he was able to do all this is special, man. And, and the way that his team, the way that the magic kind of celebrated him, you can you can kind of you can kind of see that they really really like Cole Anthony and they they're proud of him, man. And and if if there's one thing that you take from that is uh, again just the way that everyone celebrated, it was really fun to watch. And I will say, I think um, I think there's a lot of pressure to be put on this dude, and he's young. You know, we're less than 20 games into the season, and we're expecting him to play, you know, at a at a seasoned veteran pace. Obviously, it's going to take him time to get in a groove, understand the game, understand the tempo, the pace, where he needs to be, pick his spots. 
learn how to compete physically, which I think he's doing a good job of, you know, this early in the season, jumping up for rebounds, getting involved, trying to make his team better, you know, any way that he can. Um, so while the point production might not be there, like you said, there's certain things that you don't teach energy, effort, and that constant drive to help your teammates is something that you can't teach or you can teach, but something that, you know, takes time to implement and Cole Anthony under 20 games into the season already has those characteristics. You know, he can score, you know, he can shoot with time. That'll show. Yeah. And, and I, I simply think, I mean, when you look at his last four games, the numbers are not crazy amazing, you know, but he's averaging close to 13 points a game, close to seven rebounds a night, almost four assists. And like you said, this is a guy who did not have any preparation coming into the season, let alone to be a starter. Like that wasn't even in the, in the, in the thoughts to him. The idea was to play him, you know, between 20, 25 minutes a night off the bench, be Markel's backup, and all of a sudden it's like, hey, never mind. You're, you're going to have to start and be, be the guy running the show for us. So I think as the games progresses, think of Markel last season. Like He was great from the beginning, but as the season progressed, Markel got better and better and better. And that's kind of what Clifford does with his players. They get used to the system, and they perform better as the season goes along. So I think when you compare Cole Anthony's first 10 games to his 30th game to his 60th game, He'll be that much better as, as the season goes on. And in the last, I know he's been shooting much better lately, too. Um, I mean, I feel bad because he goes to the basket so hard and he misses his layups. So you're like, how is he missing those? They just go in and out. Three pointers wide open. They go in and out as well. So he is getting good shots. He, is, he has a beautiful stroke from, from three point line. Like, so he can shoot the ball. We know that. It's been, again, unfortunate that he's been missing some of the shots that he's missed. But I mean, I have no doubt. So this kid, towards the end of the season, will be a really, really good player for our team and in the years ahead, of course. And just a really quick side note, and I've talked about it in the past, whenever you have a team that struggles to produce offense, it's easy to look at the guys who are missing shots and then be like, oh, this guy sucks or he's not good enough. But the fact of the matter is if we had the 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 players that we should have in our lineup, we, sh we wouldn't be expecting such a huge contribution offensively from Cole Anthony. So you have to keep that in mind when you're assessing his progress and how successful he's been during the season. Yeah, and Cole Anthony may have made the game-winning shot, um, which obviously is very, very difficult to do because it was not even a balanced shot whatsoever. This dude was flying in the air sideways. Um, but at the same time, man, give, give, a lot of, give a lot of credit to Coach Cliff as well, um, who had the awareness to be able to, to call a challenge on that foul that really kind of turned everything around for us, it, that allowed for us to be able to take advantage of that extra possession. Um, and I know that every single person that was watching this game, when they saw that Terrence Ross had fouled out, they thought that this game was, was completely over. Cole Anthony coming into the game gave zero people confidence, which, again, I understand is warranted. But the fact that collectively they were able to battle back, man, what a what an epic, well-needed win um, that this team needed. Yeah, man. And, and, that, and I know we all, we all kind of looking at that last shot, right? But the three that he made before that, too, you know, that was a, a wide-open look. But again, Corner, with man. his struggles, you could easily, as a rookie, be nervous in that stage of the game to shoot that ball. He didn't think about it, man. Like, he was confident. He shot that three. He nailed it. And I think that also gave him confidence to then shoot that ball towards the end of the game. He but, actually spoke about, he spoke about that with Dante and how James Ennis said, yep. you know, that he trusted him with that shot and that gave him the confidence he needed. So, Shoot. Shoot. <laughs> Shoot. Yo, man, uh, Mo Bamba, if you saw his social media, he he had commented saying that that was by far one of the most entertaining or, or funniest post interviews he's ever seen. Uh, you you can tell that he was he was excited. And it's funny if you watch if you watch the replay um uh, of that play, um as soon as he hit the shot, he celebrated with his team for about a good twenty seconds, and then he tried to run off <laughs> all the way to the locker room. You see this one dude in this blue polo try to grab him and stop him from going in there, saying, "Dude, we need to talk to you." Like, come on, come Wasn't back that out. A they had a drag. Galante, yep. George Galante. It, it, was, oh, it was it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well. Yeah, but <laughs> I thought I thought it was funny because that's all all you see was him trying to run out there, and then you have that one guy that tried to grab him like, dude, we gotta interview you, man. What are you What are you doing? It's your time to shine, baby. No, man, but I, I'm so excited for him, man. He needed that so bad, like just a moment like that to say, hey, listen, you've been working so hard. The team has been hard on you. The fan base has turned on you a little bit. He needed that so bad, man. So I'm excited to see how he comes out this weekend. Um, and don't forget, we got LaMelo against uh, Cole Anthony coming up back-to-back -back games on Sunday and Monday. So I think it's going to be fun. He has that confidence at all-time high right now. 
team finally won a game. Hey, I'm excited for that this weekend for sure. Shoot. Shoot. <laughs> hey, man, but we're we're getting healthier. So that's that's definitely the good news. So obviously, we had the return of Evan Fournier, which I'll, Justin, I'll, I'll humble myself when I say that I it was happy to see him on the floor. We definitely needed him. <laughs> um, he, he, he has an offensive presence, man. And that's one thing that you cannot deny with a team that struggles to score. How many times did we watch the first quarter or even stretches of the game where it's really just Nikola Vucevic and that's it, man. This dude needs help. And Evan Fournier, he's definitely comfortable getting in the mix with Nikola Vucevic and his added punch in there is is definitely helpful. Um, they did mention um, also that uh, MCW is questionable for the next game and Aminu also participated in a recent practice um that practice they did confirm that it was non-contact and uh it, there's no guarantee that he's gonna be playing anytime soon but it's it's at least good to see that Aminu isn't out there working on his DJ skills and that he's actually on the court um putting in some work with the team yeah, man, we, we need to get healthy. We need, MCW, I think, will be the next guy that will make a big difference in our roster just because he's been with the team now for third season now, and he's a guy that has played big minutes, knows the playbook, know, needs, knows where to be on the court, and his energy. You, can, you can't I mean, deny what he brings to the table. Um, and, of course, I mean, it will be an added bonus. Okiki should be back sometime in February. That will be, a, again, another bonus for us. But I think having Fournier back in MCW keeps us competitive. I think those guys allow us to be in the games and, and, and win games, which we haven't been doing lately. Um, so I'm excited, and I just hope, again, they come back and they stay healthy because it's been a brutal a brutal start to the season for sure. Yeah, contrary to Cole Anthony thinking it was a five-game losing streak, Dante was correct. It was six games. Six. Um, so, you know, I do think that um, the versatility that Fournier brings just, um, you know, defenders having to close out on Evan when he's open at the three point line and that opening opportunities in the paint is undeniable. And um, I think Evan is learning to defer. And I think that was one of the big points that we spoke about coming into the season was, you know, can you teach an old dog new tricks? Can you tell Evan, you know, you've been a primary scoring option for a long time here, uh, but we need you to start deferring. And I think through him deferring to other players that has actually opened up his offense, which has allowed him to, score um more points and be a uh, active contributor on the passing lanes yeah i mean it, it's it's really good to see this team getting healthy because it it kind of gives you a little uh an extra added bit of hope that you really want this because if you're a fan of or, or hoping that this team is going to tank if that's your philosophy is that what you if that's what you think that this team needs um, in order for them to be better. Could you be right? Maybe. At the same time, uh, if if you're a fan that wants them to tank, but you're also a diehard fan, you have to watch every single game, watching the team lose is is not fun. Like You're spending an hour and a half, two hours, whatever the case may be, watching these games, and you want your team to win. You want to be able to watch a, a product that you can be proud of. And then at the same time, man, a after losing six straights, these players look defeated. Like, their their interviews are depressing. The, their body language is terrible. Like, I was watching a, a interview with with Terrence Ross, and it was just, it was just, it was bad. And like everything about the interview, you can kind of tell. Like it it sucked all the energy out of it. And I feel like this win was so important for them um, because it allows them to kind of. Uh, you know, get back to having fun playing basketball and that ultimately will end up showing um, on the floor. I think Terrence takes a lot of the offensive output or lack thereof to heart. Um, and I think you see that in him, um, which I, I, I think it's warranted. I mean, he's been struggling a lot offensively and, you know, he's been trying to mix it up, trying to pull up on mid range, include the three point shot, take it to the rim um, but, it, you know, I, I feel like sometimes the game is about energy and sometimes it's just not working out for you. That doesn't mean that you suck or you're a bad player or any of that. Uh, you just have to keep working, um, keep putting up shots and, and trying to find your rhythm again. I mean, he, he scored eight points in last night's game, ended up fouling out and he was a negative 16 on the court. Uh, he's, he's yeah, super. And it's, it, it 
especially because he came out the game like so on, on a different level, playing ridiculous, shooting amazing, like everything was really clicking for him. Um, and obviously, he's he's a professional uh, sixth manner, right? Where he's he's going to be the first one to come off the bench for you. You know what to expect. He's bringing that energy. He's bringing the offensive power, and we kind of felt like it was it was a snub last year that he was even mentioned in six man talks. So in his level of play that he had this year, I can only imagine that, you know, it's it's a little disappointing as a player, especially if you have that as aspirations. Yeah, man, it's, it's been surprising. because, like, like you said, he started the season so well. Um, I was trying to pull up the, the stats here. Ever since the Markel injury specifically, um, I know I ran it a couple of days ago and it was ugly. He was like he was shooting something like 18% from three-point range. Um, he was averaging like eight points a night. Compare that to 24 points a game that he was averaging during our, our, our four-game winning streak uh, to start the season, he, his game just fell off completely. And I think it's directly impacted by the lack of point guard in the second unit. Yeah, Jordan Bone did a good job. He made some shots. But he's not, you know, Cole Anthony running the show in, in the second unit. I know Aaron Gordon was then asked to run the second unit. Not the same either. So I think it's impacted by the lack of continuity with the second unit for him. But, man, we need him to snap out of it because when T. Ross has it going and he's averaging that 15 to 18 points a game off the bench, our team is totally different. And I think I think he'll figure it out. But for the time being, man, it's been a, it's been tough to watch. Yeah, it is. But shooters are going to shoot, so hopefully he can shoot his way out of it. Now, it was also reported uh, yesterday um, after the game that Markel Foles underwent successful surgery yesterday to repair mm. his left knee his uh his torn acl so that's really good news on that front so now he can kind of get the process started with his um with his rehab um and then in, in regards to the team and and getting support so there there has been talks it was recently reported that isaiah thomas is talking to teams um should the magic get involved uh, they didn't mention the magic specifically but isaiah thomas is a name that has been linked um, to the Orlando Magic for a couple of years now, whether that's linked by the media or linked by the fan base, there there has been interest, at least from the fan base, for the Magic to acquire a player like Isaiah Thomas. Should the Magic so, get involved? So really quick on the Markel front, I thought it was really interesting because um, I read that the doctor that did his ACL repair was also the doctor that worked on Saquon Barkley, running back for the New York Giants, uh, who's, what, a second or third year player in the, in the NFL. Uh, which is kind of similar to Markel Fultz's situation. It's just interesting to see, you know, why they picked that doctor and, you know, what both of those athletes who are projected to be pretty, you know, serious uh, players in their respective sports and how they recover. And I will say about Isaiah Thomas, and I know this is going to be your next point, but it, it kind of goes hand in hand with it. Um, I think if if Orlando is planning to make a move for – hypothetically Lonzo Ball, which again, you're going to talk about in a second, then I think they should probably pause a little bit on the Isaiah Thomas talks. Uh, but if it's not even realistic for them to get Lonzo Ball, then I don't see another point guard that you could grab up, you know, that has veteran pedigree, who's a big time scorer, who would be a leader and a mentor for these guys, especially Cole Anthony moving forward. Um, I just don't see where, where else you get that value from if it's not Isaiah Thomas. Uh, but again, if Lonzo Ball is active and available, I think his athleticism and his you know running of the floor would definitely benefit this team. Justin, stop reading the notes, man. You're reading ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if if you ask me about Isaiah Thomas, man, there was interest. I think it was two years ago, right? In the off season, we got rumors. We supposedly were close to signing him, and then we signed Isaiah Briscoe instead. <laughs> it was an Isaiah that came to Orlando, just not not Thomas. Um, I, so there was interest back then from Thomas. There was interest from the Magic. Right now, what's there to lose? You know, I know the front office for sure wants to remain competitive. They don't want to give up on the season. They don't want to tank. That's a guy you bring in, ideally for cheap. I don't think he's going to demand a lot of money. He's trying to prove himself. And what is he going to do? Add depth to this team in the point guard position, which we need right now. Now, the realistic part of me, though, understands MCW is coming back. He, he has played the point guard for us before. I think that's the route they're going to take. I don't agree with that. I think they should seek out some help. But I can definitely see them saying, you know what, let's roll out with Cole Anthony and MCW for a few more weeks or month before we make a move. Um, 
so while I want I say it to be here, just I want a veteran to be in the locker room helping this team. I don't see it. Um, I think we're gonna roll the dice on MCW and Cole Anthony running the show. I think it's a question of does Isaiah Thomas make this team better? And if your argument is that he doesn't, how how is that a how is that the case? Oh no, I think for a fact he makes it better. I think he's a threat from the three point line. He's a guy that can score. Right. We don't have a guy like him other than probably Call Anthony and T. Ross, the guys that can just originate offense without needing to run a play for them. Yeah. Um, so we don't have guys like that in our roster. So that's why I kind of would want him in Orlando. The issue is, again, our front office, I don't think they, they don't want to waive, you know, a player to bring in another guy. Like, all the teams would do that for sure. Our front office doesn't play that game for whatever reason. Um, but, yeah, man, I would love to see him in Orlando. I think it would be a great place for him to rejuvenate his career, even if it's only for one season. Just come in, help us out, and then go on and get paid somewhere else. Man, you you don't know what you have until it's gone. I really miss DJ Augustine. Not and listen, I am all for Cole Anthony starting. I I my my whole thing this year, no Jonathan Isaac now, especially without Markel Fultz. Get as much development as you can for Cole Anthony, and there's no teacher better than actual in-game um experience. Um, but I just wish that there was a player that we had on our roster that can be in the ear of Cole Anthony that plays in the exact same position. Obviously, Markel Fultz isn't doing that. And even so, I don't know if I would want Markel Fultz to be the guy kind of talking in his ear. He's still fairly new in the NBA. He's still trying to figure it out himself. I think a player like Isaiah Thomas that um, has the experience that is considered to being an underdog that has been looked over God knows how many times. I think a player like him would be more valuable to us um, on the bench, not just being able to support on the floor, but just being that veteran help that can kind of talk to him in his ear, give him his confidence, kind of similar to what Draymond Green right now is doing for for Wiseman in Golden State. Exactly. You know, you want to be able to have that type of player to kind of pick you up. If you're doing something wrong, tell them right then and there. This is what you're doing. If you if you made this decision, why did you make it? Look at look at this. Look at that. So to be able to have that type of coach, that type of player, that again can talk to you in a way that nobody else can because they have experience in that position, I think is really really important. And I wish that the Magic would pull the trigger and on if not Isaiah Thomas and someone that's uh, at least comparable in that aspect. Now, um, Justin, so we can get to the point that you kind of ruined already the surprise <laughs> for the listeners. Um, it was reported recently um, that Scoop B from Heavy.com um, reported that the Magic have shown interest in trading for Lonzo Ball. This isn't the first time that we've heard of this rumor, right? Lonzo Ball um, uh, trade rumor. I want to say that the last time that I heard of this trade rumor was back when the Magic were, or excuse me, the the Lakers were going to trade for Anthony Davis. Mm-hmm. Um, it, so it's 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 something that I have heard before. And when we reported this on our on our Instagram page, our Orlando Magic HQ, um, the, a lot of the feedback that we got from the fan base is there we go again, the Orlando Magic showing interest in a player that in a point guard that can't shoot. What are your thoughts on interest in Lonzo Ball, and is this something that you would like to see happen? Uh, I mean, I already, I already kind of shared how I felt about it, but to expand on that, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I do think that the Magic, again, if they, if they cannot pull Isaiah Thomas to Orlando, which it doesn't feel like there's much competition, you know, for Isaiah out there. So I think Orlando could present an interesting situation for Isaiah Thomas. Um, and again, if that's if he's available, that is who they should go after. But when I think about age comparison to these young guys, the ability to run um, and his passing ability and ability to get others involved, I think Lonzo is great at that. Is he is he going to come out um, and give you 30 plus 25 plus points per game? No. Uh, but is he going to make the game easier for some of those guys that are going to get out and run the Chumo Kikis, the Cole Anthony's, the Dwayne Bacon's, Jordan Bow? I, I, I think that it's possible for him to improve the flow of the offense uh which would help get the shooters on this team involved um and because of that i i don't think lonzo would be a bad uh, a bad choice so in my opinion I, i've never been i don't know why but since day one i was never a fan of lonzo ball i don't know if it was the whole dynamic of his dad you know projecting him to be better than steph curry and all this crazy stuff it's just i was never a fan he's never gonna live up to those expectations 
And unfortunately, he hasn't so far. Can hasn't been able to shoot the ball. Can he pass the ball like his brother can? Yes. He's a tall point guard. But I don't see him in Orlando. I just think that he's a guy that wouldn't necessarily fix our issues at this moment, uh, which which would be shooting the ball and kind of scoring. He's a playmaker. Um, and again, also long term. He's a free agent at the end of the season. The Pelicans did not pick up his option, so he will be an unrestricted, unrestricted free agent this offseason. Um, so from that perspective, if you trade for him, what is the vision for him long term in Orlando? Is it only a one year thing or are you looking to keep him here long term? Because then again, you would have Cole Anthony, Markel Fultz, and MCW is, in the, is on the contract for next year too. So I don't see a long term fit with Lonzo. And again, I don't think his game is what we need in the roster um, for this season, especially. Yeah, I'm I'm not a fan of Lonzo Ball either. Um, initially, when I first heard the report, um, it's to me it didn't sound like a real report just because it's it's really easy to say, hey, the Orlando Magic are down a point guard, so that's a team that should trade for a point guard. It doesn't sound realistic in my opinion. Um, I I'm not a, again I'm not a fan of Lonzo Ball between Lonzo and Lamelo. I'd prefer the brother. I prefer Lamelo. If you're gonna make a trade, I mean obviously it's not realistic, but um, I would stay far away from Lonzo Ball. If you end up trading for a player like that, what type of message are you sending to Cole Anthony? What type of message are you sending to Markel Fultz, who's who's currently injured right now and and working on his rehab? And I want to say he's about to become a free agent, also. So why why would you give up any pieces for anything to get a player that could leave you and go to whatever team he wants? I think the reason why you would look at it is um, because of his age. I think first of all. Um, I know I know that I sit on here and I criticize um, Aaron Gordon, you know, for seven years in the league or whatever, being 25 years old. Um, but Lonzo, just in October, turned 23 years old. That's really young for a point guard, right? Then you're looking at he's averaging 12 points per game, four rebounds, four and a half assists. I mean, I don't know. I'm not I'm not saying that he's a surefire Orlando Magic player, um, but when you're when you're looking at a situation where you don't have a healthy roster, I would say if you could get a young point guard like that to play, you know, some basketball with your team, and you could reevaluate at the end of the season, um, I think it's valuable because again, at 23 years old at the point guard position, Lonzo could make that jump in an instant. Um, so I, I think it's worth you know taking a look at. My thing is this: so if you were to go out there and get Lonzo, what do you have to give for him? You probably have to give a decent role player at the very least and possibly a pick to get because because of the age and his potential right right or do you prefer to waive a guy like clark and then go ahead and pick up a point guard in free agency that's kind of where i'm at because i feel like the point guard situation it's truly a, a, a one year thing i feel like markel will be back sometime in december next year the latest january so as long as you can kind of ride this season as much as possible with Cole Anthony and whoever else is off the bench and next year just the first two months of the season I think that's kind of what we need a point guard for because then you have Markel coming back and I don't think Markel will be coming off the bench so it's it's one of those things where if I'm the GM I would rather just get a point guard that fit that just fills the void that we have right now because next season again I feel like we have the point guard that we need I think my my idea is more centered around the fact that I don't think Markel Fultz is a long-term point guard for the Magic. Ooh, you're I, crazy. I think he'll stay in Orlando. I'm not saying he's leaving Orlando, but I think with the time he's going to spend during rehab, I think it'll give him you know, some more time to work on him, work on his upper body strength, work on his mental game, work on studying the game from a different perspective. I don't know. I think long-term Markel moves to that shooting guard position. Um you know, and Cole Anthony's a rookie. It's going to take him some time before he's a starter. You guys said that yourself. Lonzo is NBA ready. Whether you say, you know, he's he's not a good point guard or he's below average or whatever it is. As a point guard, averaging 12 points per game, four and a half assists, four rebounds per game. I don't know. It's not jumping off the page, but I think I think his athleticism, the way he opens up the floor 
with his passing and his core vision would help this team. Yeah, and uh, Markel actually spoke a little bit about um, his ability to be able to play both positions, the point guard and the shooting guard position, recently on that J.J. Reddick podcast that he was a guest on. Um, so, I mean, I, I can definitely see it happening. Um, but just the way that Markel plays, you would want him to be more in control. I would rather Markel Fultz have the ball in his hands as our point guard than, than Cole Anthony, obviously, right now. But he's a rookie, and things can change, and the more experience he, he has, you know, who knows. Um, now real, real quick before, before we get on to our next topic, I want to talk Dwayne Bacon real quick. So something really interesting happened in last night's game. Um, after the game was over, Dwayne Bacon ended up posting a picture on his Instagram page of him talking to D'Angelo Russell. And the caption on that picture was snitches lose every time. That's it. (laughs) All right. So this is one of those posts where, um, Obviously, he posted it. Someone told him that that's a really, really bad idea and that he ended up deleting the post. But then he went to his story and had this to say in his story. Dwayne Bacon wrote, he started talking crazy to me out of nowhere when I said when I said none to him. So all that other stuff y'all talking, I don't know. We won. I don't care about none of that extra. They lost. We won simple so I can post what I want. Obviously, he been had pressure. I just don't know why. So, so obviously there was some stuff going on between Bacon and D'Angelo Russell um, in last night's game. Um, I, I wanted to get your thoughts on it real quick. Should should Dwayne Bacon have deleted that post, or should he have just kept it out there, active for the world to see? I'm a believer in once you post something, man, just keep it because at the end of the day, especially when you're a celebrity of sorts, NBA player, whatever it is, people already saw it. Like it takes one second. Which once you post something. Whoa, in that three second span, somebody hit refresh, they saw it. So might as well keep it in there. Um, it's the internet. Exactly. So, I mean, once you delete it, it looks so much more worse. So, if you ask me, keep it. It is what it is. To go a little further, it looked like somebody had responded on, on his post um, comparing his four points to, to D 19 and said, Boy, you had a. That's four, right. Boy, you had a four point. You had four points to his 19. <laughs> you ain't do much of nothing. And Bacon wrote back and said, did enough for my shots and minutes to get a win, unlike him. To me, that sounds petty. I don't know. I don't know what I the don't, issue I is. I don't care, man. Bacon, you stand up for yourself, damn it. Don't let no one talk down to you. Hey, and I'm going to be, I mean, he's a magic boy, so obviously we're going to defend him. But if you put up four points, bro, like, you <laughs> But you know what I like, D-Lo, though? D-Lo, this, you star. know what I like? I like the fact that we got a guy that's out there, man, and it's defending himself, it's, 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 it's clapping back. For the longest time we've known this, which we make fun of the magic all the time, the Disney culture and, the, 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 you know, the, doing the right things always. I'm okay with that. I'm okay. You know, get out there. Get, you know, I'm, I'm fine with what he's did, and it is what it is. I mean, I just wish he would have not deleted it. Just keep it in there. Yeah, just keep it up. I, man, I would have loved to have heard, like, the conversation – that someone told him because obviously if you feel that passionate about it that's something you really wanted to do bro that like that's your decision somebody had to tell him yo what are you what are you doing man you're you play for the orlando magic you got disney on your chest you need to delete that you can't say snitches lose every time which i agree with a (laughs) hundred percent snitches lose every single time this is a lesson that should be learned by every kid out no i'm just that should be on this thing (laughs) but it's yo i would have loved to like i wonder who it was like i can imagine it being aaron gordon like talking to him like yo bacon what are you doing take that off but then again ag be doing worse so no but i saw i saw um d'lo and ag kind of get into it a little bit and ag after he caught that uh, i think he dunked in transition or something like that um, and then he went back to, to D-Lo talking. So, I don't know. Maybe D-Lo was trying to get in their head. He almost got it because we didn't play well. Uh, but Cole saved us at the end. I mean, but come on, man. You're you're D'Angelo Russell, man. Like, you, you're, you're big time, man. You're getting paid crazy money. You're talking smack to Dwayne Bacon. Like, there's <laughs> nobody else for you to be talking smack to. Like, nobody. I don't know. It, it was weird. Entertaining, but it was definitely weird. <laughs> All right, man. So the the upcoming games, the 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 schedule looks like it's going to be um, a lot easier than the crazy road trip that we, or not road trip, but the crazy rocky road that we just Let's had. Let's go. Right? I'll yeah, take so it. So fr- Friday we play on um, Friday, January twenty second. We got Indiana. Sunday we got Charlotte. That's a back to back against Charlotte immediately after. So that Monday we got Charlotte, and then Wednesday the twenty seventh we got Sacramento. What are your predictions? 
you got to go three and one. You have to. I, I'm going to give them a little. I, I know Indiana's been playing really, really well. I mean, they don't have Oladipo anymore. They don't have Levert playing right now. So you could probably steal that game if you play well enough. Um, but I'm going to go with three and one. I think you can probably beat Charlotte those two games. Um, Sacramento's a sneaky team that, that can play well out of nowhere. Uh, but they play no defense. So if you can somewhat stop them on the defensive end and just make some three-pointers that game at home, you can probably steal that game. So I'm going to go with three and one for the week ahead. I'm going to go four zero. Um, like you said, Indiana doesn't have Oladipo. They don't have um, Karis LeVert playing yet I we, because of his kidney situation. I think Miles Turner is still out. Sabonis has been playing well, but I don't think that's enough. Um, I think I think Cole Anthony with that game winner, uh, like I said, restored the confidence in this team, kind of re reinjected them with a little bit of um, energy that they needed. Um, and I think they carry that through this week. They're they're playing below uh, average teams this week. And I think the Magic are an at a minimum average team. Um, and so we, we should see that pull through this week. Yeah, I got the Magic uh, going 2-2. Two and two. I see this losing against the Pacers, taking one win from that um, Charlotte uh, back-to-back and then beating Sacramento because they're Sacramento. I see Evan Fournier uh, getting a big game against Sacramento because he's trying to show out. <laughs> he definitely wants to be in the Kings uniform, so I see him playing really, really well. But I got them going 2-2. Two and two. Um, this team needs to get some W's under them. They need to they need to take a look at the schedule and and take advantage of the games that they should win on paper. So two and two, I, I see that happening, and let's see what happens. After a six game losing streak, winning one game is not enough. Yeah, gotta nope, nope, snap nope, out nope. of it. Yeah, man, they're they're right there, man. Their record is seven and eight. It's not like they're we're fortunate that we won so many games in the beginning when we had a healthy team. Um, having a record of seven eight this early in the season is not that bad. It's not that bad. We're one game shy of being at five hundred, and you never know what could or could not happen. So we'll see. Um, but let's wrap this up. Final thoughts. Final thoughts. Um especially coming out of last night's game, I want to see better ball distribution, man. I, so one thing I noticed last night is we're back to the Fournier and Vucevic show. Uh, Vuce took 27 shots. Fournier took 21 shots last night. While it's granted, we, we don't have better options right now, but it shouldn't be almost 30 shots for Vuce and, and 21 for Fournier. Um, I think we need to pass the ball a little more, get all the guys involved. I know Justin can't wait to, to reply to me on that. But... um. I don't want to see Cole Anthony take seven shots the whole game. I think he is better than that, especially when he's attacking the rim. Um, and the way he's shooting it lately, he is finally getting shots to go down. So I want to see him take advantage and get confident enough to take those shots. Um, so that's my only takeaway for this week. I want to see the team uh, continue to move the ball on offense and be more creative, not just settle to that pick and roll play between Vooch and Fournier the whole game. we got to get more creative than that. So to rebuttal really quick, you have – 30 shots or 21 shots, whatever it is that you said. They, they're they taking that many shots because nobody else on this team can score. That's just that's just <laughs> what it is. Um, I'd rather have them take 30 shots and Vooch drop 28 and 10, you know, and Evan have like 21, 24 points than them not take that shot. We end up losing by 15 points. Um, I will say, though, for, for Terrence Ross um, – I think a lot of Terrence Ross's success has to do with seeing the ball, you know, go through the hoop. Um, and if that means getting physical and taking it into the paint and get fouled and get yourself to the line, that's what you're going to have to do if your shot, if your three point shot isn't falling. Uh, and I, I'm confident his shot will come back, but you can't be one of those guys that, you know, a J.R. Smith, like, oh, if he's on, he's on. That man is one of the most dangerous scorers in the league, but he's off more nights than he's on. You know what I mean? And we can't have that from Terrence Ross. If the three ball's not falling, there's other levels in the game that you can score from or contribute from. Um, and I'm confident that your game suits those levels as well. I think you just have to go out there and do it. I'm interested to see um, what Cole Anthony brings on his first game um, after his game winner. Like, is confidence really the issue with Cole Anthony? If you needed a confidence booster, then this is it, man. There's nothing bigger than getting a game winner as a rookie. Like, that, you got to be on cloud nine after that. 
let's see how this fully transitions to the next game. I want I want to I want to see him do well, and I hope that this is a uh, the turning point, and this is um what he needs, man, to to kind of get it together. Yo, imagine he came through like a superhero. Cold World is a superhero, uh, moniker, and he comes through just ice in them veins, hitting three pointers all the time. Yo, if I could draw, I would make. I would make a superhero cartoon of Cole Anthony and call it Cole World and make a comic book out of the season because I'm sure he's going to have a good second half. I don't have the artistic skill to to draw and do all of those things, but I think it would be pretty cool. If you're a Magic fan out there, you think that's a good idea, send it over to us. We'd like to see it. I feel like some rapper out there should come out with an album that says Cole World, the sideline story. That'd be neat. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> That's if you're a Cole. That's fan, a that's a, that's a J Cole joke, and we'll leave it at that, man. That's wrap. Thanks for listening. Peace. Thank you for listening to the Ozone Podcast, the voice of Magic fans. Be sure to visit our website, theozonepod.com, and remember to subscribe, rate, and leave a review on all your favorite podcast listening platforms.